This is gigantic. A shooter MOBA where heroes battle alongside a massive guardian in a fight for supremacy. Right now I'd say it's best comparable to Overwatch in terms of picking a character with unique abilities and going to battle over an objective. Past that, Gigantic is focused more on a single game mode and as such has a lot of depth to it. Gameplay is based upon capturing areas to summoning creatures, collecting power orbs, and killing your opponents to give your guardian energy to attack the enemy team's guardian in hopes of taking it down. Players will spawn in on an airship and immediately launch off to capture as many areas as possible and summon creatures at these points. Most every action you perform will generate energy for your guardian until one of them has enough energy to rampage to the other side of the map and take down the opposite guardian. During the rampage, the team whose guardian is going to be attacked then generates shields to protect their guardian rather than energy. Once one guardian is taken down by the other, it is then vulnerable to be hurt by its enemy team, giving you a window to inflict damage onto it up to a cap, scoring a wound on said guardian. The game also focuses on an epic finale known as The Clash, where both guardians rampage to a smaller area on the map and teams must coordinate to gain control over that smaller area. Clash is triggered based off the match reaching a total of 8 points generated. These points are generated by the guardians rampaging and teams inflicting wounds upon the guardians. A guardian rampaging is equal to 1 point. A team inflicting a wound upon a guardian is equal to 2 points. If a team manages to inflict 2 wounds in a row, the second wound is worth bonus points, which instantly scores 8 points and triggers Clash. The game currently has 17 different playable heroes to pick from, each unique and filling a different role. Every hero has 4 main abilities, with their basic attacks included as one, and one focus skill, which is their ultimate ability. Using your ultimate ability requires you to charge a unique resource known as Focus, which is generated by landing hits, taking damage, and dying. You can hold up to three Focus charges, with each charge making your Focus skill even stronger. Using your Focus ability will drain all the charges and progress you have towards the next charge in the process, so even if you have one full charge and 99% of the next charge and use your Focus skill, you will only use the level 1 version and drain the rest of what you generated so it's always wise to watch how much you have generated to the next charge and choose whether or not using your focus skill is worth it. Each character also has the ability to choose augments to all five abilities at every level as well as select four passives, gaining access to them at levels 3, 5, 7, and 9, further adding to your build potentials. This system of upgrading the hero's builds and passives instead of buying items is very comparable to the MOBA Heroes of the Storm bringing a unique way to grow stronger throughout the game, as well as diverting time in a store buying items to just quickly grabbing another skill or passive and immediately getting back into the fight. Besides for using your focus skill, your focus charges can also be spent on upgrading your base creatures to adult creatures, giving them stat boosts, new attacks, and improved tactical benefits for your team. Each adult creature costs a different amount of focus charges, anywhere from just one to all three possible, but what's cool is that summoning an adult creature doesn't drain any extra focus you have generated towards the next charge, instead just taking the exact amount necessary. So I just gained access to the game last weekend due to the Xbox preview program, and I'm really happy I decided to grab the game this time since I missed the chance a few months prior. I've really enjoyed the more cartoony take on the game's visuals, and having another MOBA to play where I don't have to focus on killing creeps to get gold and buy items is very nice, because then the focus is placed on learning your character and how to change up your skill picks with them for each different situation. Mind you, there's nothing wrong with the former mentioned model. I still absolutely love League of Legends and Smite, but sometimes just being able to farm experience by playing the game and choosing augments for my abilities that I earn off those levels is just easier and more enjoyable. While the game is still in a closed beta, and apparently the studio making it had massive layoffs, it still seems like a fairly polished game that they put a lot of work into gameplay-wise. The menu when getting on is still lacking, and there was a glitch in the store where prices for heroes were different in three different places, like if you were to just look at them in the store, actually click on them to view them individually, or actually go to buy them, all three prices were listed differently, but they just fixed that, which is pretty great. But since it's a beta, I'm mainly focused on the gameplay and how it flows. Not that the prior issue should be ignored, however. The game is fun and action-packed, with my experience showing me that there's more time in action than sitting around and preparing unless you're actively attempting to sit back. The few maps currently in the game, I, I think there's like five, but the wiki's no help, and since they're on random rotation, you can only know if you actually get them, are all different sizes with points put in many different positions, providing for different playstyles based off each. They're all visually nice in my eyes, and I haven't found a single map that I dislike playing yet, honestly. 
The main issue I really have with the game so far is that it usually feels quite one-sided. I've had a few matches that were close, but for the most part, one team is usually dominating the other quite obviously. It's very possible this is just due to the amount of time my friends and I have played as compared to the people who are actually very skilled at the game, but I wouldn't say we're bad or not knowledgeable of what it takes to win the game. So far I've only found three heroes that I dread going against, those being Lord Nosos because he's destructive in any combat situation, and for whatever reason, stupidly good at chasing me down, though he is defined as an offensive powerhouse so I guess it makes sense, uh, Zenobia because she just shreds my health bar to regen her own, even eating through the tanky characters I played, and I love playing tanks so it sucks to be countered so well. Mind you, there's always need to be a good counter to tanks, and Zenobia is a utility focused hero, but goodness I dread facing her every time I see one, because it feels like there's so little I can do against her leeching me, especially when I'm stuck in her huge AoE slow field. And finally, there's Taito the Swift, who is defined by the forums as a hit and run hero, where in reality I'd call him in pain in my butt, that constantly has a spin up and can pick off a single person quite effectively, even with multiple people focusing him. I'd say Voden is close to being on the list, but he's not yet to the point where I can't stand facing him, it's more that he's just generally annoying to me. Ignoring the fact that these heroes just get under my skin, they generally fit the playstyle and or titles that the developers gave them, and they're definitely as counterplay to these characters. I've just had more experience getting destroyed by them and pouting, than I have actually taking a step back to think of good ways to go against them. Lastly, or what probably should have been firstly in the list of complaints, is the tutorial. Now, the only MOBA I've played with a great tutorial is probably Dota 2, but even then, that's because it's split into multiple missions specifically focused on a single aspect, and a lot of them are required to even proceed to playing the game online. The tutorial in Gigantic is very fast and basically pours the most basic information on you all at once, teaching the controls and core aspects of the game real quick before th just throwing you in. It took me a couple actual matches online after that to really become acquainted with the game, and even after 12 hours of playing, I still just learned a bunch by reading up to make this video. All in all, I feel that this is a game with a ton of potential, a game that I really want to see flourish. I've enjoyed getting to play and learn the different heroes and reading up on their small blurbs of backstories, my current favorite character being Ashling with HK206 just after her. The Guardians are an interesting focus of the match, as compared to the Nexus or Core, because they don't just spawn minions, instead they actively fight with you towards victory, literally jumping from your team's starting side and holding down your enemy Guardian for you, so you have the chance to inflict a wound on them. The concept of going to points and placing creatures is interesting to me, and it gets even more interesting when you browse the different versions of the adult creatures you can currently get in the game. The fact that the resource you generate to use your ultimate abilities is shared with what you have to use to summon your creatures, which are extremely important to area control and utility in matches, is a bit weird to get used to, but ends up providing many different strategic options and makes you think about more than just a cooldown when using your ultimate ability. It's not a perfect game, but it has a lot of creativity and life in it that was really refreshing for me to be able to tap into. I can't wait to see how they update the starting menu and add new heroes and maps, and hopefully add something to the end of the match instead of just going from the final hit to a victory screen. It's quite disorienting at first, and it honestly just doesn't feel right. Gigantic is a game that has my support enough that I was willing to take the time to make a full video on it, recording a couple hours of gameplay, reading up on the subreddit, the wiki, which really needs an update, and even their forums, which are filled with information for people to browse, and even typing up a huge script for me to follow and recording my audio rather than just winging it. The game has very quickly spurred my passion, and I really look forward to the many hours I get to share with my friends playing the game and growing as it does. I just want to take a moment to thank you all for watching the video, I put a ton of work into it and I haven't quite done something like this so it was weird to attempt but I actually love how it came out and that's really not normal for me because I'm usually so hard on myself with what I make. Uh, that being said, links to basically any media will be in the description and I want to personally thank the great YouTubers Magic Carp Used Fly for doing his actual game spotlights that I watched dozens of times over to analyze a formula for this all, as well as II Jericho II and MF Pally Time for having awesome content that I love to watch and immediately thought of for the comparison parts. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions about the video or Gigantic, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day, night, week, and all those other things, and I'll see you in the next video.